There is a question revolving around the Sith Lord Tyrannus and Sidious that has plagued the minds of many fans for years now. How was it that Dooku would weaken in his old age, while Sidious only grew stronger with time? Well, welcome back, Disciples of the Force. We here at the Archives have been expecting you. When Dooku revealed himself as Tyrannus in the Battle of Geonosis, he comes out swinging as one of the most powerful beings Obi-Wan and Yoda had ever encountered. In all truth, he's one of the most powerful beings in the entire galaxy. Even Grandmaster Yoda was astonished at the power of his former student, and just how drastically the dark side had elevated his skills in the Force. Dooku had truly evolved into something else entirely after joining the Sith. And as the Clone Wars raged on, Dooku would only learn to embrace this new, darker aspect of his power. However, what he hadn't been expecting was that he had already seen his peak in the dark side before he could ever truly relish in it. And by the time this peak was over, his power had drastically atrophied. While still a formidable fighter capable of taking down any normal Jedi, Dooku was nowhere near the powerhouse that he should have been and was unable to handle his rising power and the threat of Anakin Skywalker. This is the stark contrast to Palpatine though, who seems to only grow stronger even when he passes Dooku in age at the time of Revenge of the Sith. So why is this? It's once again time to open a holocron and find the answer for ourselves. Some time ago, we did actually talk briefly about why Dooku was getting weaker, and that information is very important in finding the truth in today's topic. When speaking of the dark side, the first thing many think about is its raw immediate power. It is quick and easy. It is a quick solution to one's problems, one which gives you all the power that you could need and want nearly instantaneously. However, George Lucas also described this as being more like heroin or steroids. The more you get, the more you want. But the more you have, the more that it takes from you. Lucas described the dark side feeling like a drug, a hit of endorphins. The price of the dark side is one's very life as it begins to siphon the strength from your body. This is commonly referred to as dark side degradation in the lore, and in the words of Mace Windu, the dark side is a torch which burns bright, but burns quickly as well. While the dark side rejuvenates its servants in their older age and keeps them moving, the dark side takes from its wielders and leaves them wrinkled husks. It will take your youth, your beauty, and most importantly, your vitality. A dark sider's prime, when they are in this era, they are nearly unstoppable. But the further they delve, and the more their thirst for power increases, their very lives are exchanged in the process. Even the great Sith recognize and note this as a shortcoming of the dark side, and yet, they do not care. As Darth Plagueis would write, The dark side is a sickness no true Sith would ever wish to be cured of. By the time of Revenge of the Sith, Dooku was the age of an 83-year-old standard male. Dooku had lived much of his life as a Jedi, and then spent the last few years learning of the dark side. But Dooku's time as a Jedi is very important. Dooku gained a lot of vitality from the light side of the Force. This made him sharp, powerful, wise, and long-lived. But all of that was stripped away from him the moment he began to use the dark side, and he drastically slowed down after the boost in power. The Storm of the Dark Side granted Dooku immediate power, but it demanded too much from him in the short time. In Revenge of the Sith, in the novel, right before his final duel with Anakin and Obi-Wan, Dooku expresses how tired he feels, how much he cannot wait for the Clone Wars to be over. The stress of managing the entire Separatist party and his life as Sidious's apprentice had taken a great toll on his body, and the Dark Side had taken even more. During this duel, his age was catching up with him, and the dark side degradation only sped up this process. Dooku was an older man, but the dark side was literally making him sick. In iconic writings from the Revenge of the Sith novel, it states that each crashing blow of Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber ages Dooku a decade. But what about Darth Sidious? It's important to remember that Sidious suffered the same dark side degradation in his older age. The black cane that he is seen carrying around with is just for show for a certain point, or at least it started that way. While now actively augmenting his body, and when Palpatine is not using Force Valor, Sidious is in truth a decrepit old man that very much needs his cane. In the novel Dark Lords of the Sith, Sidious actually attempts to run without using the Force in order to see how gifted physically he still is. It says that Palpatine was actually surprised that he was still capable of running whatsoever, and it is made clear that he is aware of how much the dark side has taken from him, and had no idea if he could even so much as use his legs without the Force help. 
When Palpatine uses the Force physically, he is essentially puppeteering himself using it. We see Plagueis do this exact same thing during a sparring session, where Plagueis allows his body to become like a marionette, with the puppet strings being the Force. Sidious can essentially step outside of himself in a meditative state, using the dark side to move his body on sheer willpower alone. This adds a lot of context to the way that Palpatine fights, making it even more disturbing. So now, this begs the question, why couldn't Dooku do the same thing? The difference between these two men comes down to simple experience. Tyrannus had only been training in the dark side for around a decade before the start of the Clone War, but he had been a man of 70 by this time, a man of 70 when he began his journey on the dark side. He was older than Palpatine and had a lifetime of Jedi teachings behind him. Perhaps had Dooku joined the dark side in the Sith earlier, maybe say in his 40s or 50s, this wouldn't have been a problem whatsoever. 10 years is only enough time for a Sith to get a high off of the dark side, rather than refining it and aging that power, creating more of a fine wine. Overcoming the weaknesses of the dark side is a skill that one must learn. The first 10 years is like a drunk binge, and then a terrible hangover that will threaten to destroy you. Only mature Sith Lords know how to bypass the shortcomings of decaying mortal flesh. As contrast, Sidious was an acolyte of the dark side since his 20s. It's not hard to see that Palpatine had far more knowledge of the dark side, knowledge that he purposefully hoarded for himself. There were ways that the Sith Lords of old used to keep their bodies strong and powerful, and it's more than probable that Sidious knew these secrets and refused to share them with Dooku. In the lore, it's made very clear that Dooku grew much more powerful than Sidious anticipated. Sidious never intended for Dooku to be a permanent apprentice, and his powers in the dark side shocked him, especially after Dooku contended with Yoda. Because of this, it is our personal theory that he withheld dark side secrets from his student fearful of what a fully enlightened Dooku was capable of. What's really interesting, though, is that Tyrannus became obsessed with Sith teachings during the Clone War, and Dooku even started his own personal holocron collection. Dooku saw after the holocron of Darth and Dedu specifically, and upon retrieving it, there was a possibility that Dooku was aware of his dark side degradation and his actively weakening form, making efforts to prevent this downfall. Since his power was regressing with age, he knew he had to do something quickly before he became all but useless. Dooku was on a clock, and we believed that he knew it. But now we have to look at their mindsets and the way they fight and operate. Dooku has always valued his physicality more than Sidious did. As a Jedi, he was taught to care for himself. He kept his body in shape, as well as his room meticulously clean. Dooku was a perfectionist all the way around, especially with his weapon. Being a duelist was Dooku's claim to fame. It was his greatest pride and joy of his entire life. That being said, he relied too heavily on his body's natural strength rather than augmenting and use of the Force as time went on. Again in the novel for Revenge of the Sith, Dooku spent lavishly on his Force Reserves just to stave off Anakin's brutal attacks, indicating that up until this point, that he had not been doing this and was operating off of physical skill alone. It was because of his limited years of experience with the dark side that the well of power that he had in reserve was much more diminished than it would have ever been for Palpatine. Darth Sidious only ever thought of lightsaber combat as a way to humiliate an enemy, not actually defeat them. All of Sidious' focus and energy went into his force powers, and he did everything he could to refine just how much of a power reserve of energy he had at his disposal, described as an eternal storm raging within Palpatine. We believe that Palpatine did this, and Dooku did not. Sidious' inner darkness was akin to a hurricane that the Dark Lord would release on a tight, controlled burst of energy, or with overwhelming fury. This juxtaposes Dooku's internal darkness, which is more of a thunderstorm by contrast. When you look at it this way, you understand how one Sith Lord may be able to keep his old, broken, decaying body moving like it was in their prime, while the other has to budget and bargain on how much energy they spend on physicality alone. Dooku is weaker as the engagement goes on, where Sidious remains terrifyingly strong. This is a very long way of saying that Sidious was just more powerful and more experienced, but it's good to know the details on how the dark side functions and how Sidious functions. The power gap between Dooku and Sidious was wide, but was quickly closing. Dooku's potential was massive, more massive than Palpatine had initially bargained for himself, and Dooku was growing into a dangerous rival. But Sidious knew that Dooku's age would always be the downfall of him. As he told Grievous when he spoke about the Count's death, Soon I will have an apprentice, one far younger and more powerful. 
It was Anakin's youth that was one of his most attractive features. Palpatine knew Dooku was old, and he knew he was weakening. And where Palpatine had learned to hold his body together by using the dark side of the Force, hearkening back to entities such as Darth Nihilus, Darth Sion, and Darth Vitiate. Dooku was not a member of the Sith Order long enough to be privy to these secrets, quite intentionally so. All the while, Palpatine was preparing for Essence Transfer, a ritual to send his consciousness into a younger body. However, they struggled to hold his massive amounts of power. This was something that we also believed Dooku was going to attempt one day, which is why he saw after the holocron of Darth and Dedu specifically, a Sith who had seemingly mastered eternal life. Dooku knew that he was on a clock, and Palpatine knew he was on a clock as well. But all of this raises an interesting what-if scenario. What would the galaxy look like if Dooku was trained much younger in the Sith arts and practices? What if he had become more acquainted and accustomed with the gifts of the dark side? I believe that there is a terrifying proposition out there, one that suggests that the power of Dooku and the powers of the dark side that he commands were barely at the surface level. That perhaps if Darth Tyrannus had had as much time as Darth Sidious, that he would have become a true great rival. But that, my friends, is a story for another day. As always, my fellow students of the Force, thank you so much for your time and for joining our archives today, and may the Force be with you.